here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're speaking with a chief whistleblower, former chief spokesperson for the health insurance industry, the insurance industry's greatest nightmare. He was the spokesperson for Cigna for years and before that, Humana. And then through a series of incidents, uh, his own encounters with people without health care, dying for lack of insurance, he stepped out. He quit. And he's written the book Deadly Spin. An insurance company insider speaks out on how corporate PR is killing health care and deceiving Americans. Wendell Potter is our guest. Okay, this is Politico today. Uh, it says Republican Andy Harris, a conservative Maryland physician elected to Congress on an anti-Obamacare platform, surprised fellow freshmen at a Monday orientation session by demanding to know why his government subsidized health care plan takes a month to kick in. A congressional staffer who saw the exchange said Harris stood up and asked the two ladies who were answering questions why it had to take so long what he would do without 28 days of health care. Isn't that supremely ironic? And he had been campaigning against an incumbent, a Democrat, who was, uh, and he was accusing him of being in favor of Obamacare. And, uh, and he, this, this guy who was elected, who you just spoke about, has pledged to repeal the, the legislation. Uh, yeah, he, he is finally, I guess, for 28 days, possibly going to be in the same predicament that many Americans are in for m months, if not years. Uh, and, and he was saying, essentially, where's my government-run health care? <laughs> Okay, let's go to Sicko. Uh, let's go to the Academy Award winning filmmaker um, Michael Moore's film Sicko. We got an issue in America. Too many good docs are getting out of business. Too many OBGYNs aren't able to practice their, their love with women all across this country. When Michael Moore decided to make a movie on the health care industry, top level executives were on the defensive. What were they hiding? That's not on, right? No. Okay. The intent is to maximize profits. If you denied more people health care, you got a bonus. When you don't spend money on somebody, it's a savings to the company. I want America to have the finest health care in the world. Four health care lobbyists for every member of Congress. Here's what it costs to buy these men and this woman, this guy, and this guy. And the United States slipped to 37 in health care around the world, just slightly ahead of Slovenia. I denied a man a necessary operation and thus cost his death. This secured my reputation and it ensured my continued advancement in the health care field. In the world's richest country. I work three jobs. You work three jobs? Yes. Uniquely American, isn't it? I mean, that is fantastic. Laughter isn't the best medicine. I get a bill from my insurance company telling me that the ambulance ride wasn't pre-approved. I don't know when I was supposed to pre-approve it. After I gained consciousness in the car, before I got in the ambulance. It's the only medicine. There was actually one place on American soil that had free universal health care. Which way to Guantanamo Bay? Detainees representing a threat to our national security are given access to top-notch medical facilities. Permission to enter. I have three 9-11 rescue workers. They just want some medical attention at the same time that the evildoers are getting. Hello? Michael Moore's Sicko. All right, there you have it, the trailer for Sicko. It comes out, what does Cigna do? You were the spokesperson. Were you the spokesperson at the time? I was, you yeah. were. Yeah. So how'd you prepare for this? Well, we were afraid as the movie was being made that uh, uh, Michael Moore would do ambush interviews as he's done in a lot of his movies in the past. So uh, we lived in fear, I did, especially, that my CEO would be getting out of his limousine at some point and there would be Michael Moore with a camera in his face. So one of the things we had to do was to make sure that we media trained our CEO and other executives so that they wouldn't look like a deer caught in the headlights, if we could do that at all. What'd you tell your CEO? Wait, tell me his name again. Ed Henway. So what'd you tell Ed? Well, that, that um, uh, just be pleasant. Uh, don't uh, uh, run and hide uh, and just shake his hand and say, hi, I understand you're the, the Hollywood uh, uh, movie maker uh, and I've heard of you and I, uh, uh, I don't have time to talk to you right now, so if you'll call Wendell Potter, I'm sure he can arrange for us to uh, talk at some later time. Then it wouldn't have just been the people of New York calling you, but people all over the exactly, country calling exactly. Wendell Potter. But I was willing to take the bullet because I was, uh, you know, and what were you going to say? 
I would say not a chance. You're not going to talk get anywhere close to no, the city. No, but what were, was your message on Sicko? The message on Sicko was that uh, uh, this was uh, Michael Moore's vision for America was to lead us into socialized medicine. Uh, we went back to those points again. Uh, we wanted to make sure that people were afraid of any other kind of system that, that would have more government regulation and in which people had universal care. Did you work with other insurance companies oh, in dealing with Michael Moore? Absolutely. We heard about Michael Moore starting this movie when he announced it, I think, in 2004. And uh, as the movie was being made, we didn't really know exactly how we would be portrayed in the movie. But uh, when the movie premiered at the Cannes Film Festival in um, 2008, Seven, uh, we, as the industry, the Industry Trade Association, sent a staff member to the uh, to the Riviera uh, to go to the movie to be among the first to see it, and then report back via uh, conference call who was in the movie, how how we were being portrayed, and uh, we from that moment on developed a very, very sophisticated communications campaign. Can you to, say what it was in five seconds because we're just about out of time? To The, str the strategy. To, to make sure that people were saw uh, him as a Marxist, as a socialist, and uh, that he was uh, going to be destroying the American dream. Wendell Potter, are you for socialized medicine now? I think that we need to have a system which everyone is covered. If you call that uh, socialism, so be it. Wendell Potter, former executive, former chief spokesperson for Cigna and Humana. His book is called Deadly Spin, an insurance company insider speaks out. I'd like to ask you, as we talk about the strategy, the sophisticated strategy that you developed for Sicko, uh, you're dealing with your competitors now. They are more your friends, of course, than right. this film, because it can yeah. go after you all. Um, what did you have meetings together in this oh, conference did. call, sending yeah. this lucky staff member to yeah. the Riviera, yeah. and they call back? What did they say? Did they say the film was well received? Oh, they did. They said, in fact, they reported that there was a 15-minute standing ovation at the end of the movie. So it was very, very well received. Uh, we were very scared, and we knew that we would have to uh, develop a, a very sophisticated and expensive campaign to uh, turn people away from the idea of, uh, of universal care. Uh, we were afraid that this might really galvanize public opinion. We were told by our pollsters in a meeting that was held just days after uh, the premiere of the movie that for the first time ever since the, they had been polling, uh, that people were, a majority of people were in favor of much greater government involvement in our health care system. Who were so your that, pollsters? Uh, uh, McInturf, uh, public opinion strategist, Bill McInturf, who's a, a well-known Republican strategist and who uh, uh, went on to to be uh, my, uh, John McCain's uh, 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 chief pollster. Uh, he's been a pollster for the insurance industry for probably two decades, and he had been tracking public opinion for all these years. And uh, this really scared the insurers, the executives. We were all concerned about that because we felt that this movie would would be have such an impact that it would really pave the way for the legislation to be passed that could be very detrimental to the insurance industry. So it's very important for the insurers to attack this movie as 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 fiercely as possible. And so what was the grassroots strategy if if you had one, um, as the movie came out in the United States. Well, one key component was to uh, fund a front group, and, and that is something that I write about quite a bit in the in the book, about how special interests in, in the insurance industry in particular will use premium dollars to uh, funnel thousands and thousands, if not millions of dollars, to big PR firms to set up fake grassroots organizations, AstroTurf, uh, as we call it, uh, and front groups. And in this case, uh, there was a front group that was set up called Healthcare America. Uh, and the sole purpose for it to be set up was to attack Michael Moore and to attack the notion of a single-payer system in this country. And who were the people who populated Healthcare America? Uh, there were just a couple of people. Uh, there was a, a, a woman, uh, I think her name was, uh, I can't remember her name, Sarah Burke, I think was her name, but the, the media contact for it was uh, a guy named Bill Pierce, who I had known and worked with uh, in the past. He used to be uh, a PR guy for Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. At that time, he was uh, in the public relations firm APCO Worldwide. He was listed as a media contact, and if you called his number, you would have reached him at his desk at APCO Worldwide. It didn't have any substance. It was just a What is APCO Worldwide? It is a very, very big uh, PR firm that was uh, uh, started several years ago by a big Washington uh, law firm, uh, Arnold and Porter. The A&P is uh, Arnold and Porter, oh. and they were uh, uh, defending, so. yeah, and they were defending uh, tobacco companies. So they felt that they needed to have uh, help in the court of public opinion as well as in the courtroom. And what did um, Healthcare America, who did they say they were? 
They said they were representing consumers. and uh, Did anyone expose this at the time? No, no one did. Did anyone have them on to counter what Michael Moore had to say on television, radio, or quote them in the newspaper? No. In fact, uh, and I, I, I've done a search recently just to find out how they were covered, and they were never exposed. Uh, but even, did, were they quoted? Oh, absolutely. They were quoted extensively. They sent out press releases, uh, uh, and uh, they were given status as a legitimate organization, even by the New York Times. In what article? Uh, there was an article that the, that the New York Times wrote as a as a kind of a review of of Sicko. Not really a review, but just a story about the uh, the movie actually premiering in the U.S. in June of 2007. And the New York Times story uh, uh, quoted uh, the uh, uh, Healthcare America spokesman as saying that this represented a move towards socialism. Uh, and, and there was not an, apparently not an attempt on the part of the reporter or any reporter that I saw to disclose the fact that this was funded uh, largely by the insurance industry. Let's go to another clip of Sicko, of Michael Moore's film that they all so feared that they sent one lucky staff member, um, employee from Cigna, to the Riviera to watch the film festival where Michael Moore got a standing ovation for 15 minutes and then have a corporate conference call to report back um, on what they saw. This is Sicko. This guy broke his ankle. Uh, how much will this cost him? He'll have some huge bill when he's done, right? Yeah, NHS, everything is free. I'm asking about hospital charges. Yeah. You're laughing. Even with insurance, there's bound to be a bill somewhere. What would they charge you for that baby? No, no, no. Everything's on. This is NHS. Yeah, you know, it's not, it's not America. <laughs> So uh, this is where people come to pay their bill when they're done staying in the hospital. No, this is the NHS hospital, so you don't pay the bill. Why does it say cashier here if people don't have to pay a bill? Those who have reduced means get their travel expenses reimbursed. So in British hospitals, instead of money going into the cashier's window, money comes out. Yeah, they, they, they look at me like I'm from Mars when I'm asking the Brits, you know, how much they they you know paid for you know this that or, or whatever we're talking to michael moore let's talk about how we arrived at the system we did in this country well uh you know my grandfather was a country doctor actually uh he was from canada uh he went to medical school in the late 1800s uh which was a year then um it's, you know it's about what, pretty much what they knew uh back then they could teach it in a year. And uh, so the little village uh, uh, where, you know, I was raised, because uh, my mom was from there, too, because he was there. And, uh, you know, he was paid with eggs and milk and chickens and things like that. Uh, he didn't do it to make any big money. They didn't make big money then. They were comfortable, uh, the local doctor, uh, but they weren't the rich man in the community. Um, we got away from the concept of, of treating people because it was the right thing to do. Um, the, um, uh, the nuns uh, ran the hospital that I was born in. The nuns weren't doing this uh, to turn profit and invest in Wall Street. <laughs> you know, I mean, they did it because they thought that was their duty to serve God and serve mankind by opening hospitals and delivering babies. Uh, we're a long ways from that now. Uh, somewhere we let profit and greed enter into this. And in the film, I, I, I peg a, a certain date when the HMOs really got their start. And I got very lucky. I, I had uh, a, a 23-year-old uh, researcher in my office who worked on the film, uh, who was actually uh, uh, someone, I, I believe, that was recommended by uh, Jeremy uh, Scahill. Uh, so, so there's a democracy now connection to this moment in the movie. <laughs> Uh, but he found this uh, Watergate tape. It has nothing to do with Watergate. It's one of the Nixon tapes at the archives, National Archives, where Nixon and Ehrlichman are discussing whether or not to support this HMO concept. And Ehrlichman says to, to Nixon, uh, you're going to love this because um, yeah, this is private enterprise. This isn't like some freebie thing. And Nixon goes, oh, I like that. Well, well, tell me about it. And then Ehrlichman says, uh, well, this is how they. This is how it's going to work. These HMOs, they're going to make more money by providing less care. The less care they give them, the patients, the more money the company makes. And Nixon goes, 
Ooh, <laughs> not bad. <laughs> and it's all there on tape. Wendell, you are laughing as Michael's describing the Ehrlichman tape, uh, the Nixon Ehrlichman Holdman. You know this tape. I do know that tape, and it was, uh, I think, a great find. Did anyone me. ever tell you you look a little like John Haldeman? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, and it was important for that conversation. The important was really, the conversation was very important because uh, at that time, Ted Kennedy was trying to get legislation enacted that would have been a Medicare for all. Uh, system in which we would have had a single payer system in this country. So uh, Nixon was um, was was desperate to find some private enterprise solution that could be used as a counter to what Ted Kennedy was trying to do at that time. It's very important. I want to go back to Healthcare America. This is really important what you've just been describing. Um, this astroturf organization that's quoted by the New York Times and other publications and media as a consumer uh, healthcare group where that isn't that's sitting in APCO made by Arnold and Porter, uh, who represented the tobacco companies. And they're there to kill any idea of public option or anything like that. Uh, what other organizations are there? And how successful did you think you were in dealing with sicko? Did you think you contained? the message. There's no doubt we, were, we felt we were successful in blunting the impact of the movie. Uh, we were concerned that the movie would be as successful as Fahrenheit 9-11 had been. And uh, we knew that if it were, uh, it really would change public opinion about our health care system in ways that would, would be harmful to the profits of health insurers. Uh, so it was very important for this campaign to succeed. At one point during a strategy meeting, uh, uh, one of the people from uh, uh, APCO said that if our efforts, uh, our initial efforts were not successful, then we'd have to move to a, an element of the campaign to push Michael Moore off a cliff. And uh, not meaning to do that literally. Uh, Are you to, sure? I, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> to tell you the truth, when I started doing what I'm doing, I was uh, concerned about my own, my own health and well-being, maybe just from paranoia. But these companies play to win, and we're talking about some big bucks at stake here. Billions and billions and billions of dollars. So what were they talking about when they said, if this doesn't work, we're going to push them off the cliff? Well, it would be just a, an incredibly intense PR effort, if necessary, to spend more premium dollars to uh, defame Michael Moore, to discredit him even more as a filmmaker. So were you doing research on him? Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. were going personally? Well, I was a part of the effort. I didn't, that was part of the, the reason for hiring APCO and, and to work with the Trade Association is that it relieved me of the responsibility of doing that kind of work. You paid for it to be done by people who were experts in doing that kind but of research. But they were doing uh, an investigation into him personally. Well, they, absolutely. They, they, we, we knew as much about him probably as he knows about himself. About his wife about his kid. Oh, yeah. You, you know, it's important to know everything that you might be able to use in some kind of a campaign against someone to discredit them professionally and often personally. And do you use that? You use it if necessary. Did you uh, use it? it was not, we didn't deem it necessary to push him off a cliff because we, we were very uh, mindful of the box office uh, uh, totals. We looked at that every, every weekend to see how well it was doing, and we could see that it was not getting or drawing the audiences like Fahrenheit 9-11 did. Uh, and we thought that the efforts of Healthcare America and our allies were, were succeeding. Um, when the film came out and you did the research, uh, did you feel that you actually had contained it at the beginning? I think of a CNN uh, going a CNN critique that Sanjay Gupta did. Mm -hmm. Sanjay Gupta did. Right. Do you have anything to do with that? I didn't. Again, some of the the reason you hire these big PR firms is you can do this with, with a little bit of a hands-off kind of operation. Uh, the big PR firms have uh, very good connections with producers of, uh, of 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 network shows and cable shows and and columnists and pundits, and so you you rely on them to be able to get your messaging out. And they're very very successful in in, in influencing people uh, about how they write or how they put a show together. I mean, he was furious. Michael Moore went on CNN was outraged and said that everything they said about him wasn't true. And in the end, um, CNN had to apologize. Yeah. They were not correct what they said about Michael Moore's film, that he had gotten his facts wrong. I think CNN and, and, and Sanjay Gupta undoubtedly were embarrassed uh, that they had been, frankly, duped by the insurance industry, probably not even aware 
of the role that the insurance industry Did the was insurance playing industry in. put out to all the networks? You had your chosen producers at all the networks uh, fact sheets on Sicko? Not directly. Again, that's that's why you you hire these uh, these these third parties, these PR firms, to do it for you, so that that your involvement cannot be traced.